Thank you so much for joining. <laughs> so glad to be here. All right. So Luke from Polymathy today, we are going to talk about something extremely interesting and it's the gods. That's right. <laughs> the Fascinating gods. through mythology for thousands of years. We're still talking about them. Absolutely. I think we we always will. And uh, I've got a little list here that I've also uh, sent over to you. And uh, really what we're going to do today is that we're going to uh, talk about the 12 Olympi Olympians plus one honorable mention. And uh, we will talk about how to pronounce these names in the original languages with period pronunciation. And that's when, when where you come in. <laughs> ah, speaking my language <laughs> exactly so we will looking we'll be looking at of course the greek pronunciation and then we'll look into latin to make it interesting we can uh, do both uh, ecclesiastical latin and classical uh, since you know difference is small uh, when it comes to greek uh, i'd like to have a look at modern greek as well but what type of uh, ancient greek pronunciation are we going to use oh well well we could how many do you want five <laughs> ten no um it's probably fun to do two or three at most. The important ancient Greek periods, a little bit different from Latin, where we have the classical period from mm -hmm. the first century BC to the second century AD. That's classical pronunciation. It's mostly the same. Ancient Greek classical period is basically just the fifth century BC with a little bit in the early fourth century. But then there's Koine. Mm -hmm. So I usually like to, in my own mind, to have like a classical attic. Yes. And then I have pronunciations around uh, the beginning of the, the first century AD, more or less. Those are my sort of two points. So during concurrent with the ancient Roman classical period and back in the Greek classical period. That sounds wonderful. When you say Attic, of course, we're looking at basically fifth century, is it? Mm -hmm. That's fifth. right. Attic being, of course, uh, Attica, the region that Athens is in, uh, kind of like Latium is where Rome is. So yes. Attic is just uh, the language of the Athenians. Sounds great. Uh, then I'd like to, uh, without further ado, let's just jump into it. And then as a little bonus, I, I might as well just mention them in Italian just for further reference for people who are interested. That would be great. And uh, I'd like to begin with the father of the gods. Uh, a very interesting one, of course. So uh, in English, you say that... Zeus. 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 And of course, uh, in Italian, we say Zeus. Zeus. Now, what happens in, uh, uh, in ancient Greek pronunciation there? Well, the oldest standardized sort of pronunciation would be that classical Attic one that most people are interested in, Zeus. So the, uh, the letter Zeta seems to represent more than one thing, depending on the ancient Greek dialect. Okay. Exactly what you did, that uh, the Italian pronunciation, that Z, seems to come from different Greek dialects that had a Z, but classical Attic, probably had zd wow. during the classical attic period of the of the fifth century bc so the inverse so s d instead of d s Zdeus. Zdeus. that is so mind-blowing because it's not what we are used to if you think about it it's very um, strange i find it very uncomfortable oh well, i can imagine yes how would a modern greek pronounce because i think once i heard a modern greek i might be wrong say something like dias oh well, that, uh, so that's a very interesting point, too, because the, this is a third declension noun in ancient Greek. And most third declension nouns from ancient Greek have been turned into what look like first declension nouns, if that makes sense. And Latin has the same kind of first and second and third declension. Whereas Italian retains them in the words that end in an A, like say forte, si, uh, yeah. as a third declension adjective from fortis. It's not called that in Italian, but those forms are retained. Mm -hmm. They were totally... They're so totally gone in modern Greek. So dias is from the genitive form. So uh, zdeus, yeah. or uh, yeah, zdeus for the classical attic. I'm doing this to remind myself to do the pitch accent. But right, but I was about zdeus. to say, yes, of course, because it's pitch. That? You have a pitch Not accent. Because there. I'm in Italy, then just <laughs> use your hands. Um, so zdeus. Um, so dios is the genitive. Uh, delta, iota, omicron, sigma or mm -hmm. d-i-o-s in mm -hmm. our letter so dios is the genitive the possessive form so the accusative form is dia and then they just put a sigma in modern greek on the end of for the good measure form <laughs> and dias 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 you said which is correct dias so it's it's really disconnected from uh, i mean if a modern greek hears the ancient greek pronunciation they might not even recognize it if they haven't right absolutely to which uh for which reason most modern greeks are strongly against the possibility of a different pronunciation. I understand. Uh, depends on, on, of course, on the Greek. So a modern Greek would see the word that we call, of course, Zeus, Zeus in Italian, 
Zdeus yes. in a classical Attic pronunciation, they would pronounce it Zefs. Zefs. Now, as we move into um, the uh, Roman perspective, um, how would you read uh, the, the name of this god in, in classical Latin? Ah, so, uh, Jupiter. Yeah, Jupiter. Yeah. Jupiter. So uh, Jupiter, the sky father, you and Zeus, yes. the, the sky, and the pater, the, the father, the, uh, Jupiter. Jupiter is normally how it would be. So we Jupiter. have a Same. Jupiter with a long vowel mm -hmm. or the long vowel switching to a geminated P, Jupiter. So both are, both are correct. So either long vowel for phonemic vowel length and then just one single P, or you just drop that short vowel and do double P. That's right. That's compensatory lengthening. Very interesting. In fact, as, as a modern Italian, we, for some reasons, we say Giove, Giove. And, uh, uh, but to me, if I had to choose, I'd rather probably go for double P and, and short vowel. It sounds, Jupiter sounds more natural to me than Jupiter, but whatever. I mean, whatever they want. <laughs> it's yeah, their and language. Jove, and Jove, even we used to use that by Jove. It's a little archaic in English, Jove. Uh, I so see. that's from the uh, from like the accusative version. So Jove from Yoem or Yois. So it's all it's all there. Fascinating. So uh, moving from the father of the gods to my favorite goddess, if I can be a little bit, you know, just personal uh, when it comes to this. But I like Athena, and uh, I'd like to start by uh, looking at how they pronounce it in in ancient Greek. Once again, in the Attic pronunciation. There are two versions of her name. Okay. Um, there is an older one, which is Athena, and then the other one, though, is Athene. Mm. And there I'm using, again, the restored pronunciation. With the pictures. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. That's right. So Athena or Athene. And that second one, which was Athene. kind of the more classical one, ends up getting subsumed by the Athena, and that ends up becoming the more standard or proper version of the name. They're interchangeable, though. I think I, I once I heard a, a modern Greek pronounce it Athena uh, with a th mm -hmm. already. And I find it fascinating that instead in, in the ancient, like uh, Attic pronunciation, it's still a T. It's not a yeah. th. It's an aspirated T, exactly. Which is why ancient Romans transcribed this as a TH. I was about uh, to say, yeah. Because even. Really T plus H. Yeah, and I find it interesting because whether whereas in English you're using Athena, which has the TH, and therefore it's kind of more connected to, I would imagine, the modern Greek pronunciation. But in Italian, we say Athena. So it's there isn't aspiration because Italian and aspiration don't really go well <laughs> hand in hand, <laughs> unless you're from Florence. But um, we do say Athena, and, and I can tell probably where we got that sound from. Uh, it could be that it's still connected to more of an older pronunciation, since you're teaching me that the T sound, although it's aspirated, is how they pronounce it back in the day. There are a couple of occasions where that T sound, a TH uh, sound, or that aspirated T sound of theta, ends up becoming uh, different in Italian. Hmm. Uh, one example would be uh, tzio, which okay. is uh, tios in yes. ancient Greek, uh, meaning uncle. Yeah. Uh, and uh, another one, though, that we see in, um, so we have spada, mm -hmm. it, that comes from uh, spate, okay. in Attic. In Catalan, uh, though, it's spasa, espasa, oh, the, the, the letter S. So it okay. shows how that some people in, in ancient Roman times, some Greek speakers were saying Athena, but others were saying Athena. I some see. people were doing some kind of um, fricative yes. sound. Uh, so, so it's already kind of an early development, if you will. I have a question that you just uh, made me think of, and is is the fact that when we speak about both, I would imagine, classical Latin and modern Greek, uh, you have the uh, very famous, that you've speak, spoken about this a lot, voiceless alveolar fricative into the retracted S. And uh, yes. now, do we have retracted S in Attic pronunciation? Absolutely. So the, um, the so modern Greek, and European Spanish are two well-known languages that have a retracted S sound. Yeah. And when linguists see this occur, one can ask, well, this is somewhat distinctive. In fact, oftentimes Spaniards and Greeks hearing each other at a distance think the Greek hears a Spaniard, just hears like, blah, blah, blah. they hear, oh, that guy must be Greek. And the Spaniard thinks the same thing about ah. the Greek guy. And then they try to talk like, oh, wait, no, that's a completely different language. <laughs> yeah. Same thing happens between Poles and uh, the Portuguese. Yeah. Uh, so I've heard. Um, now the uh, and one of those characteristics is they have this in common, the sh sound. Yeah. Languages uh, like this usually lack a sh 
phoneme. Yeah. So say in Italian, we have, of course, a sh sound. Yeah, like say scienza. Yeah. Um, and uh, in classical Latin, scientia. Mm -hmm. So the fact that there's this sh phoneme that is a distinct thing, well, there's two options. Either you merge the very similar retracted sh sound of classical Latin into it, and then you get a, you get, well, you get Bologna. That's what, how they usually say. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, and uh, I remember even speaking with a, a Latin speaker who used the ecclesiastical pronunciation, but had identical S and the in the sh sound. So, like, uh, like scienza, he would say scienza, or he would say scio for I know instead of mm -hmm. scio. But he also would say Marcus. It was all the same, and it was just beautiful. I loved it. So yeah, retracted S is expected as a default for languages that don't have a sh as a separate phone. As a so separate phone. Yeah, so we would expect languages that have a, more than one sh sound, like Slavic languages, Czech, and mm -hmm. uh, Croatian come to mind, for their S sound to be really high pitched and really forward. And that's usually true. If you listen to Croatians, in my American English, I just say S, and it yeah. can be all over the place. But I say S, we usually, we and I both use the same So, S. yeah, I have the same S, yeah, the frontal. And in fact, I think for, for clarity, for those who are not familiar with the difference, I think it's important, the way I like putting it is a frontal S, like the one you use in English or the one I use in my version of Italian, it's just a S sound that we're familiar with. Whereas the voiceless retracted that we're talking about, it's in between the S and the full sh that you have in sh so if i had to do that i would do something like sh and i believe well, it's it's the x in, in mandarin it would be yeah. the x sound in mandarin when they say xie xie. it's that sound yeah yeah right? and that's certainly it, because there, there's only one sibilant sound in say ancient greek or classical yeah. latin yes then it's going to be able to go anywhere it's probably going to be around in the middle hence the retracted yes uh sound which sounds weird to us as english italians yes it's english speakers or italian speakers or german speakers yeah but it makes a lot more sense of the default yeah and what you were saying actually happened to me once that i was making a recording in modern greek for a video of mine and a, a, a child a kid came to me and said are you speaking spanish because he thought he must have i mean it's impressive that a kid did that but uh he must have heard madrid spanish because otherwise not, not all varieties of Spanish, as we were saying, have this characteristic, but definitely when they say nos vemos with that sh sound, it absolutely Beautiful. sounds like that. And then as we move into the uh, Roman counterpart, so of course, uh, uh, what we in Italian say Minerva, uh, with a full V, of course, but how would you say it in classical Latin? Minerva. Minerva. And okay. the, uh, the change of that, well, this is, of course, the hardest thing for, it was the hardest thing for me when I learned about mm -hmm. classical pronunciation. It took me a long time to accept that. Whoa, wenny, weedy, weeky, I'm not saying that <laughs> nonsense. But, of course, I've obviously uh, changed my opinion based on the preponderance evidence, preponderance yeah. of the evidence, yes. Yeah. Um, but when does that actually change? It changes around the 2nd century AD for a lot of speakers. So something like a bilabial fricative, probably mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. Minerva, Minerva, something like that. Mm. And then it doesn't probably become a labiodental sound until okay. hundreds of years after that. All vowels are short, right? In that in that word. There is no That's long. Right. Minerva is just all shorts. Fantastic. Let's move to the next one. Let's go to the seas and the yeah. god of the sea. Poseidon. Poseidon. Yes. Uh, in the uh, restored classical Attic pronunciation, the conservative uh, one. Because what happens was very interesting is that there is actually strong evidence for a innovative, an innovative sub hmm. dialect of mm -hmm. this, where the epsilon iota was already closed to E, even in the classical period. So Poseidon already closed Poseidon, which is the later pronunciation yes. anyway. And um, uh, I'm going to make a whole video about that. <laughs> Absolutely. That's also the pronunciation that we expect to hear later in, say, early Koine, Poseidon. Epsilon iota, it, like in English, we mm -hmm. say Poseidon, which is great. Yes. How is it in, uh, how do Italians? In Italian, you would say pos Poseidone, Poseidone. And of course, the S can be a S or a Z, depending on where you're from. So you can say Poseidone or Poseidone, kind of depends, but both are acceptable. Uh, but yeah, mm. Poseidone. Mm. And uh, the, which is interesting, that's a spelling pronunciation many, many people use for Epsilon Iota when that word is brought because Poseidon as a name is essentially is never used in classical Latin so it actually comes to us from post-classical Latin time yeah which is why it's written that way because every yes. other epsilon iota that we get into Latin that comes into English like say um the Italian name Irene see it starts with just an I but it's spelled in Greek epsilon iota 
Uh -huh. In classical Attic pronunciation, it's Irene. Uh -huh. It starts an E, and that A closes to E. Oh, wow. And that's how it's always transcribed in Latin. And for example, the English word Irenic or Irenico, uh -huh. meaning peaceful, um, that's just with a letter I, not E-I. So the reason that it's E-I in um, uh, Poseidone, right? Sí. Poseidone. And we pronounce it as an A, as a diphthong, is a spelling pronunciation. And essentially an error that we've oh, made wow. in the more the past 500 years or uh, whenever the word was borrowed into the modern languages because we thought that's how ancient Greek ought to be pronounced. But not so. In classical Attic, it's a closed E sound, as we use in, say, perche. But is it long? Italian. Is it long? It's long. It's a long, closed E sound. Can you say it again? So, um, Poseidon. 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 Okay. Yeah, Poseidon. exactly. I believe in modern would be Poseidonas, if I'm not wrong, with a Absolutely. with a th, but it's a, it's still a D in active pronunciation. It's not a th, like Dori or whatever the Greeks now Exactly. Pronounce. There's very little evidence in any of the classical dialects, nothing in classical Attic. Outside of classical Attic, but in the same time period, there might be the fricativization of delta in some positions into a mm -hmm. the, like maybe in Sappho's Aeolic, Aeolic dialect but there's not very strong evidence mm -hmm. for it. Maybe over in uh, closer to Sparta, possibly not in really? like near, near like laconic adjacent. Yes. Elian. Elian is the name of that dialect, but there's not really strong evidence for it. It does, however, become much more prevalent starting in the first centuries AD. We see it in Egypt and so forth. So that the does exist as a pronunciation of Delta in certain environments in antiquity, which is, of course, the only pronunciation of modern Greek. And let's move to the uh, Roman version, although, of course, I have a dedicated video where I explain that they're, they're not just copy paste, that there are some differences between these gods. But uh, I, I won't dive into that because today we're just talking about the linguist, the language part. Um, but um, so in Italian, we would call him Nettuno. Nettuno. We lose the P and, and put a double T instead, which happens all the time uh, from Latin to Italian. Nettuno. Uh, what happens in classical Latin? Neptunus. 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 And I believe the, uh, the, the U in Neptunus is long. Absolutely. Not the last one, of course, but the one in the middle, Neptunus. And still the retracted S at the end. Sounds fantastic. You got it. Sounds fantastic. Let's move to the next one and let's talk about love since you know <laughs> and uh, I, I actually like the way it sounds in english uh in italian we say aphrodite um mm -hmm. how do you say it in english aphrodite aphrodite yeah aphrodite yeah we yeah aphrodite we, we aphrodite it, so we spell it essentially as the ancient romans transcribed the ancient Greek, uh -huh. we pronounce it way differently yes um although some things are similar because in modern greek it's aphrodite See, si, Aphrodite, um, yeah. at least that's how modern Greek would pronounce the ancient Greek uh, spelling, mm -hmm. where where the letter eta has become an e sound. Yes, and uh, we do that in English just uh, long exactly, e yeah. E, yeah, but separately for our own reasons. We have nothing to yes. do with nothing yeah. to do with uh, imitating modern Greek, and the uh, the long e sound regularly becomes i, and mm -hmm. so Aphrodite. So, what is it in uh, yeah, classical? Yeah, after a great uh, vowel shift, I think that was. Yeah, yeah we'll, 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 it sure was great, wasn't it? <laughs> um, <laughs> what happens in so, Attic pronunciation? How did they say it back in the day? Aphrodite, Aphrodite, Aphrodite. Okay, yeah, so it's a, it's a P. It's a P. Goodness yeah. Gracious, Eventually, of course, there are pronunciations. Not all of them, but some of them will have made the fricative in the letter phi. There's evidence for that in Pompeii, where they transcribed the phi, like in the name uh, Daphne, Daphne. Mm -hmm becomes mm -hmm. written as Daphne. So we know that uh -huh. some people in the first century AD were saying Aphrodite or something okay. like that. Aphrodite instead of the yeah. aspirate P, Aphrodite, mm -hmm. which is more archaic. Mm -hmm. More archaic. Interesting also because the F is definitely easier to pronounce. So it could be just that, you know, they got lazy and that's where that one came from. I mean, that's a lot of language mutation happens like that. I just agree. What, what's easier for people to say. Uh, splendid. And of course, as we move into Rome, uh, in Italian, we say Venere. Uh, Venere, how would we say it in classical? Venus. And Venus it also means charm. Mm -hmm. uh, which So Venus, and also mean beautiful, like uh, Venustus mm -hmm. is a way to mm -hmm. say beautiful. It's okay. a synonym of like pulcher. Or oh, say pulcher, yeah. So Venustus, so but Venus itself means charm. So uh, Venus means charm, so Venustus means like charming or beautiful. And of course, the V, we talked about that. Yes. In fact, if we were to step in, step back into ecclesiastical, uh, we would just say Minerva basically sounds just like Italian. And I believe 
uh, Venus. Is there any long vowel when it comes to phonemic vowel length? No, it's all short. No, so right. not really. Because usually, I think other than the actual V and the G and the Cs that are the main difference between classical and ecclesiastical, so as we all know, uh, sometimes I think that the way I understand it, please correct me if I'm wrong, since you've even been to the Vatican and you've spoken to a lot of priests, love that video. So the way I understand it is that what used to be phonemic vowel length is translated into a stress, into ecclesiastical kind of following, so where you place the accent. Uh, I, I almost never hear people speaking classical, ecclesiastical pronunciation actually elongating proper phonemic vowel length. I just hear them putting stress. It, the reality is that it's true for most speakers of Latin in general or people reciting it because phonemic vowel length tends to be an alien concept to oh, yeah. the most, the majority of people who are yes. trying to learn, learn Latin. Italians, mm -hmm. English speakers, Germans, yes. Spaniards, none of them have phonemic vowel length in a way that is so frequent as in Latin, yes. if at all. And so they don't know how to deal with it. So, of course, so it's, pr there are probably a few more people percentage wise who are doing phonemic vowel length or trying to do it or doing it well in classical pronunciation because there are just so more yes. so many more people who are actually conversing in Latin who use classical pronunciation rather than uh -huh. ecclesiastical these days. But indeed, so you know, Venus would be how I'd expect an Italian. Venus, say, Venus yeah. Of Venus. Venus. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Venus, Venus. Yeah. Uh, let's move to um, you know the, the goddess of hunt, and uh, we're going to talk about <laughs> yes. Artemis. 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 So the stress is at the beginning. Artemis. It is. Yeah, or the pitch accent, or stress, depending on the century. Yes. Um, uh, and of course, you being a Japanese speaker know how to do uh, pitch With accent. pitch, yes. So uh, Artemis uh, would ends up sounding pretty much like Japanese anyway. But yeah. the stress accent sounds so similar in a lot of words that it ends up becoming virtually identical. And yes. modern Greek would say the name written in the ancient Greek way the same. I don't know what no it idea is. No idea if they have a modern, I, yeah. Artemis. Artemidas is what Artem I would expect. But yeah, I no idea. Know. So it, in Italian we say Artemide, but one thing I'm noticing is that oftentimes when I look at how they pronounce it in Greek, it's really funny because if they put the stress at the beginning, we put the stress at the end. If they put the stress at the end, we put the stress at the beginning. It's like Italians and Greeks are like, oh, you say it like that, then I'm going to say it the other way around. <laughs> like literally. And you'll see this as we go forward in this list, but it does happen. Uh, so say it again in, in uh, ancient Greek, please. Artemis. Artemis. Okay. So it's kind of as a high pitch at first and then it goes down. It's mm -hmm. a down step. So in my uh, general reconstructions of ancient Greek, I tend to use both pitch accent and stress accent wherever yes. the accent occurs, just to make sure everybody can understand. Oh, no, so absolutely. if I just use pure pitch accent, people usually don't understand. Yeah, without actual formal training, I understand. We should make a collaboration on how to talk about pitch accent. Uh, let's move to uh, Latin. So how do we say that? It's, it's actually quite a common name even in English, but how do we say it? <laughs> That's right. Uh, Diana, of course, is yes. how we say the name. And in Latin, there's two pronunciations. There's either Diana or Diana. The mm -hmm. difference is that the letter I is either short or long. Both mm -hmm. are correct. Both are used in poetry. Diana or Diana. Okay. And the I is also is always long. Yes. Whether Otherwise, you choose. Yeah. The Diana. Yeah, exactly. And of course, as I say, in Italian, it's just a stress. So we just say Diana. So we just put the stress in the R, but there is no elongation of, of the I, which in fact is really difficult for me because I think in Italian, we only have long vowels when they're stressed. Uh, exactly. Right. And that's why for yep. me saying Diana, it's kind of difficult. So probably I would opt for the short one. <laughs> yeah. And also something characteristic of Italian uh, is that an iota, an iota, and a letter I in hiatus, that means followed by another vowel, usually becomes a y. Yeah, like yeti. Right, as a yeah. J. Yeah, yeah. 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 So like yeti. Diana. 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 Like, Diana. Itali yeah. like uh, Italia has four syllables in Latin, Italia, but only three in Italian. Italia. Very it's almost identical. Italia. Yeah, almost. Very it's different. Very, yeah, very, very, very subtle. A linguist, a different for linguists. Um, let's move to Hephaestus, which I think is how you say it in English, Hephaestus. Uh, That's true. Right. So, um, how would do you, any, any idea how they say it in modern Greek? Because I have no idea. Oh, probably just um, Ephestos. Ephestos. Okay. And what happens in Attic pronunciation? Hepaistos. Hepaistos. Unrecognizable. Hepaistos. <laughs> so you, you you aspirate after the P. P mm -hmm. Right. That's right. Letter phi is a P. Uh, followed by an H sound, or just, rather, an H sound at the same time. Okay. So it's just like the P in uh, in uh, Mandarin. It's the same thing. As yes. That. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Very good. It's basically the same thing. Yeah. Uh, can you say it once once more? 
Hepaistos. Hepaistos. Very interesting. And as we translate into um, what would be modern Italian, which is Vulcano, uh, just like the word for volcano, basically. And uh, what happens in Latin? Vulcanus. Vulcanus. Okay. And if I'm not mistaken, the word volcano actually comes from Italian, named after, I think, an island where he... Oh, yeah. And God was supposed to be. I don't remember where this it's, island is. You, it's right next to Sicily. Island, man. Right there, next I, to I Sicily. Probably, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Edna, you got Volcano. Volcano, yeah, yeah, yeah. We have Volcano. Uh, the reason why I know that is because that's, where, that's the island where my parents met. Oh. So, yeah, I know, I know that island very well. <laughs> Let's move to the messenger, I believe. And uh, so you say Hermes, Hermes in English? Hermes. Hermes. Yeah, Hermes. Okay. Yeah. And uh, classical Attic, Hermes. 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 Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's in the modern Greek, would, in pr pronouncing in the modern Greek fashion, it's Hermes. Hermes. Yes. So the, a feature that we've noticed is that the sound of H for both of the ancient languages, so the H, mm -hmm. is gone in both of the modern languages. Mm. So something that actually happens a lot. The H sound was also mostly gone even in English 400 years ago. Oh, and you to, put it back. <laughs> we put it back. We put it back. Um, in the, so in the 16th century, Shakespeare's time, most English speakers had lost the H. But oh, it ended up getting restored in the 17th century, but not for every word. You, for example, as a British English speaker, you say herb. Herb, herb yeah. You, know, we, you don't, United, yeah. We, we say herb. Yeah. Why? Because during the period of colonization, not every single one of those H words got fully restored. And we have a few of the uh -huh. older ones that had remained the innovative feature. Also because classical Latin has fully pronounced aspirated H's, but in the ecclesiastical, it's, they're gone. Uh, yeah, people just don't do them. It's just uh, Italian phonology. It's Italian phonology. So it, and that happens in words like uh, creatio et nihilo which uh, becomes nihilo or maybe even nikilo, I believe, is, is acceptable. Exactly. So what's so interesting is that the H sound is gradually lost in different speakers, even in classical times, mm -hmm. even though that wasn't the dominant pronunciation. Yeah. And so we see that the H sound is preserved. It has to be preserved because we still use an H in English and German, and it means yeah. the, just like it did in classical Latin. Yeah. So what happens is there is there were enough speakers using it when those ancient like Germanic languages get transcribed to so the H sound. Yeah has meaning even in uh, old spanish mm -hmm. when fernandez mm -hmm. becomes hernandez, hernandez. Then yeah, and yeah. the h goes silent again and uh, yeah it's true because the spanish have the jota but they don't pronounce the h they their aspiration is in is in the jota and it's funny because even if uh, you did restore it in english i mean ask a cockney they drop all of their h's and they go like that's that's too hot mate that's too hot like there's no h exactly <laughs> i have restored it in all dialects it's not always restored right. everywhere and uh in a uh, RP, a very educated English pronunciation, people will pronounce all their H's. And then the fact that like a Cockney, which is not definitely how you would expect the prime minister to speak, it loses the H's. Maybe something similar happened in classical Latin in the sense that very educated people, uh, government officials, poets, they pronounced it. But the people on the street, they're like, I can't be bothered with that, which is similar to what you know, you've got in <laughs> London. Fascinating how history repeats itself you know, from a linguistic standpoint. Let's talk about wine now. And uh, so I think Dionysus is how you say it in English. That's it. Dion That's very good. Dionysus. And I believe yeah. the modern Greeks say Dionysios. I think this stressed in the O, if I'm not wrong, Dionysios. The accent in Greek is regressive. So um, that's just one of those rules you learn. <laughs> so it's um, in modern Greek pronouncing this, this name, the modern Greek pronunciation, it's Dionysos. Dionysos. Okay. Dionysos. Just so the, the uh, Y that we have in uh, our word is uh, just an E sound. And of course, the delta is a the, like mm -hmm. this. And, uh, but in the Attic pronunciation, it's Dionysos. Dionysos. New. That, and it's long, too. Wow. Dionysos. Dionysos. Wow. That's a sound I would normally associate with either Germanic languages or uh, sort of Romance languages that pretend to be Germanic, like French. So <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> So uh, that's uh, that's evil. you see. So that's interesting <laughs> that it was present in 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 Attic pronunciation, and that's one of those words that I was saying. That, for example, in Italian we say Dionisio, and so we stress it on the e. Really, Dionisio. So there's, a, there's an ios, there's an, an uh, a letter i. So it's mm -hmm. a Dionisio. Di Dionisio. 
Dionisio. Yeah, so and, and of course, as we move into mm -hmm. Latin, uh, we have uh, in Italian we say bacco because, of course, us in Latin just becomes an o. Uh, what happens in Latin? Yeah, and uh, yeah, bacchus, who bacchus. comes from another version of the god's name from Greek, which is bacchus. Oh, I didn't so, know that. So they didn't yeah, just come it, up with it. No, many of the, like um, like uh, Apollo and, mm. uh, and and other names are are taken uh, directly. From yes, the Greek because they didn't have an equivalent. Because you mentioned mm -hmm. Apollo, uh, it's an easy one. So how do they say in in ancient Greek? Is just what what happens? Apollon, Apollon. Uh, so there is an N. And uh, okay. yeah, there there is an N, and the N is usually taken away in Latin, mm -hmm. so just Apollo. Apollo in Latin. With a long O at the end, I can hear. That's right. Apollo. Um, I actually like it more in with the N. I really like the N <laughs> in that one. In Italian, we just say yeah. Apollo. Apollo. Uh, there is no long O at the end, but if you really want to speak standard, it should be closed. Apollo. Uh, not everyone does that, though. So a lot of people say Apollo right. with an open O, whatever. Uh, as long as you don't close the one in the middle, I think it's open and standard. Actually, hmm. I, I remember hearing different uh, doppiatori, yeah. uh, dubbers, yeah. doing different things. In different oh, yeah, that doppiatori. happens. Yeah, that happens. Yeah. Like sometimes we'll do it closed or open. Yeah, Apollo. I, think, and I Apollo. remember hearing this, the prescriptive, like, theatrical standard Italian, it's supposed to be open because it's okay. just an Omicron and it's yes. uh, Apollo. Yes. But it's just more comfortable for a lot of Italians, apparently, to close it to a polo. D depending on where you're from. Are... Yeah, depending on where right, you're from. So. Let's move to the beer. Let's move to the beer <laughs> now. <laughs> and uh, what happens with, uh, with, uh, with Ceres in Italian? We say Ceres. Uh, what happens to, uh, I think it's Demeter or something. I have no idea how to say it. In the... Yeah, I think it's uh, Dimitra in modern Greek. Dimitra is si. the name. The modern Greek pronunciation of the ancient Greek name is uh, Dimitir, Dimitir, mm -hmm. but in classical Attic, it's Demeter, Demeter. Okay, Demeter. And, right, and Keres, of course, for the classical Attic. Classical Attic, because you have a K, and is the A long, or just all no. short? Just all short, short Keres. 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 Keres, Keres, the genitive. Very nice. Which gives us cereal. Cereal, oh yeah, yeah, there you go. And then beer. Because <laughs> of exactly. that. I, I was wondering, beer? Was yeah, because beer? it's a Ceres, it's a popular beer in Italy. What? So, ah. uh, yeah, Ceres, there is this very famous uh, Italian commercial that says Ceres, Che, to say like there is Ceres, so we that's have got horrible. it. Yeah, Ceres, Che, so that's what they say. It wouldn't work in classical Latin though. Ceres, Che, that doesn't work. <laughs> Can't do it anymore in classical. So next one, let's do, uh, let's do Hera, absolutely. Ah, uh, yes, the, the queen of revenge. Uh, so, uh, Hera in mm -hmm. the classical Attic pronunciation, and modern Greeks pronounce that name as Ira. Mm -hmm. so it becomes an E, and the aspiration of H is, is lost. lost. Ira. So, in, but, in, but in Attic, you said it's Hera. That's right, Hera. 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 Okay. And, and what happens long. in the Alpha long? What happens in Latin? In Latin, Juno, giving us Juno. Juno, of course, being uh, nice and simple. Yeah. Uh, Juno and uh, Junone in Italian. Right? Junone in Italian is correct, yes. And of course, depending on the accent in standard, the O is closed. But in then many accents, including my, my original one, uh, it will be open. It becomes Junone in Sicily, but Junone, uh -huh. it's, uh, yeah. Uh, I love the, the sound system in Sicily. It's amazing. Five stressed vowels, but only three unstressed vowels. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah, amazing. yeah. It's amazing. It's amazing. And then, to... yeah, and you have some interesting, we, we need to make a video about Sicilian because uh, depending on where you're from, uh, like, for example, even though we are famous for open vowels, if you are from Trapani, they close every E. So basically, cool. so yeah, so they, they will have every E is E even the ones that are not supposed to be. So it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating, <laughs> they just, they still have five vowels, but they just choose to go for the close air all the time. It's, uh, it uh, okay, what other God have we got left? Well, the one that goes with my other channel, Scorpio Martial. Oh yeah, the most important one, let's go like, for it. Plug that there in. it is, so we talk about um, war, what happens in Greece? Ares in Ares. classical Attic pronunciation, Ares. Ares. So, and that's something that's super hard for most people to do, not surprisingly, because we don't have languages phonemic, with phonemic vowel length or pitch accent. So what we have to do here is lengthen this eta, so it's a long res, but a short a. What we want to do as English or Italian speakers is stress say Ares. It. Yes, Complete just stress reverse it. it, Ares. Yeah. 
you know, that's, that's, that's fine. It's not how it would be in the classical times, mm-hmm. though, or in ancient times, pretty much anywhere. Ares. 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 And what happens in modern Greek? Do they say Aris? Something you like know, that? I don't know. It's I assume it's something like Areas, but I, I'm just it guessing. It could be. Uh-huh. I'm doing kind of the same pattern as you do with, with Vias for, mm-hmm. uh, for uh, Zephs. Uh, well, I'm sure that our Greek Zephs. followers will let us know. <laughs> so I'm in the sure comments. they'll list all of them in several comments. This is what you should them up. And of course, that's the super famous one. It has become a chocolate bar in, in, in Latin. What happens? Mars. 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 And the Mars. older form is really cool, which is seen in some poetry. Ma wars, ma wars. Really? M a v o r s, ma wars. I had never that, heard that one. It's interesting. I know, but that wo gets uh, taken out, uh, so it's just ma. So ma wars. It also demonstrates how the v was a wo sound. Yes. At least in an archaic period. Yes. Because you have uh, ma wars, ma wars, ma wars, ma wars, mm-hmm. mars, mars, and then in Italian it just becomes Marte. And I don't believe there really is any difference. Well, maybe a little bit length, but in in uh, ecclesiastical, pretty much, Mars nah. it is what it is. It's nah. it's that one. What about the? Uh, there is one that I haven't written down. Like if we die and we have been naughty, we end up in the classical version of what could be considered hell. So uh, not a, the underworld, should I say? And uh, I believe great. that that becomes Hades in English. Hades, uh, w- in Italian, we say Ade. So I'd be very interested to see how they did it in Greek. Well, that is in classical uh, restored pronunciation of Greek. Hi, this. Hi, this. And it's Hi, very des. strange because it has yeah. an iota in it. That, uh-huh. Now, this is um, it's an iota ad script, mm-hmm. meaning an iota that's written after it, or an yes. iota subscript if you were to use only lowercase letters. Yes. And uh, of course, I'll, I'll share all the, what this looks like in the text. Um, so there are lots of words in ancient Greek that have, say, an alpha with an iota underneath mm-hmm. it. Now, what's this about? These are called long diphthongs. Long mm. diphthongs occur in some languages as distinct from short diphthongs. Uh, Old English is an example that had long diphthongs distinct from their short diphthong counterparts. So there is an i diphthong, like we have the i diphthong in Italian. Uh, there was an I diphthong mm-hmm. in Latin, and the I one in classical Greek has a counterpart that's long, which is I, I. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's really hard to distinguish those, I from I mm-hmm. in normal speech. Apparently it was for the ancient Greeks as well, Two. because <laughs> by the time the ancient Romans came around, they had already monophthongized this mm-hmm. I and say, hi, des, among mm-hmm. other terms, into just ha, des. So mm-hmm. they would still write the iota subscript sometimes actually they stopped and then they started again the second century AD, but when they yes. that. Um, but they kept the vowel long so the vowel stays long hades in uh-huh. the classical roman time period uh, pluto. pluto pluto yeah of course like the and then of course the planet that people say don't is not a planet and then it's a planet again oh, but <laughs> oh is it a planet <laughs> yeah pluto so do we have a long u uh yes it's long Pluto. Pluto, and in uh, in in Italian it just becomes Plutone, uh, and uh, in English you just say Plut- Pluto, Pluto or pl- Pluto. In your case, you're flapping because uh, that's right. Pluto yes. in American uh, normal English, normal American English pronunciation. Yes, I like pronouncing that intervocalic D. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Pluto or Pluto. Or Pluto. Something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pluto. Yeah. Uh, honorable mes- mention. Let's talk about Vesta. So uh, what happens in uh, in um, in in Greek? I think it's hest, hesta, heste, hesta. No idea. The uh, the vesta, vesta, classical Latin pronunciation, hestia. Hestia. And, mm. Hestia, which is the classical uh, Greek pronunciation, and it would just be pronounced estia in a modern Greek pronunciation. They just take off the uh, the aspiration, and they don't have phonemic vowel length. Mm-hmm. I understand, and that's of course in classical Latin. If so, in this case, it's just Westa. We just Westa. go Westa. Okay, it sounds that's wonderful. Bad. Fantastic, fantastic. I well, thank you because I had forgotten some of the gods. <laughs> I've forgotten some of the gods. I hope they don't mind. Thank you so much for your help. That was absolutely fantastic. And of course, if anyone wants to know more about uh, the Attic pronunciation, classical Latin, they should totally check out your channel. I think most people know both channels, Polymathy and Scorpio Martianus. And uh, I really appreciate you joining me and hopefully we'll be able to make several more in the near future. Thank you, Metatron. Thank you so much. And uh, goodbye, everyone. And if you have any questions, let us know in the comments.